these last few weeks, we've been in this, the book of Psalms, chapter 23, and we've been trying to put ourselves in the place of the sheep. These last few weeks, we've been trying to put ourselves in the place of the shepherd. The shepherd was responsible for those sheep 24-7 every day of the year. And just like in the countryside where David lived, the weather changed from season to season. And yet, those sheep still had to be taken care of. That was his responsibility to make sure that they were fed and they were watered. And so in different times of the year, that shepherd would either be close to the house or far away from the house, depending upon where the grass was. And what we've been doing these last few weeks, we've been seeing David take those sheep and take him farther and farther away from the home, finding himself out there alone with those sheep night after night. And because of this, he has a plan. The sheep may not understand everything that the shepherd knows, but the shepherd has a plan for the sheep. As he, as we talked last week, as he was leading them through the valley of the shadow of death. The sheep didn't understand what that shepherd had in mind, but the shepherd was taking them somewhere that they needed to be. Taking them where, where it was very necessary for them to abide for a while. Now listen, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because next week we're going to look at a verse of Scripture differently perhaps than we have before. Where the psalmist says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Understanding, understanding that, the shepherd, understanding that, you and I need to realize, no matter where we find ourselves today, our shepherd is preparing us for a table that he will spread in the presence of our enemies. Now that's what will be next week. Now keep in mind, the shepherd leading the sheep. And we find this in verse number 24, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And this is where we're going to be at uh, this morning. The purpose of the rod and the staff. And notice how it's worded, for comfort. Now, when we begin to look at the life of David, we pick him up a bit at a very early age. And yet, at, at an early age, he had the responsibility of being the shepherd boy. Matter of fact, many times, those that took on the, the position of a shepherd learned it very early in life. And there were some things that was necessary for that shepherd to learn very early. One was this, the selection of the rod and the selection of the shepherd's staff. Many of us have been brought up to, to believe that the rod and the staff are one, and yet when you begin to study the life of the shepherd, we find out the rod and the staff were two different instruments. Let's look at the rod if we can, first of all. <clears throat> when we see this picture of a shepherd, all we really see is the staff, and the staff is it's so easy to picture because it has the crook, but we don't see the rod. And yet, in studying after the shepherd and trying to find out how early shepherds took care of their sheep, they went out and 
picked a particular small sapling. And from that sapling, from the base on down, they began to carve out a personal rod that was, that was made for them. And as that shepherd developed physically and changed and grew physically, maybe the rod even changed. Maybe they had to get a different rod, but it was always shaped so it would fit perfectly in the shepherd's hand. And the shepherd's rod was something like this, maybe about two feet plus long. And one end was made to fit perfectly in his hand, but on the other end was a was, was shaped like a ball. In other words, it was heavier on one end than it was the other. And the reason why is because it became an extension of either his right or left hand, depending on which way they threw. And it was a symbol of strength, power, and authority, especially when you found yourselves in a very serious situation. You know, when Saul was talking to young David before he fought the, the, the giant Goliath, David had very com- his, his confidence already built up because he had already faced a lion and a bear. And he understood what it meant to defeat them. And yet it was with the rod that he defeated those. Now there's three things I'll bring up quickly in regards to the rod. One of the things that perhaps used most It was for correction. Now how can can something that is used for correction be looked upon as something of comfort? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now you picture that in your mind. Now we've been walking now in in the sandals of David. Rick, quickly go back and you're a sheep and you're looking at that rod And it has been used to correct you. And yet how can you find comfort in that? Just think where you and I would be if that rod had not corrected us. But there's something also very interesting about that rod. Oh, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 37, this is what this says. Now, if you were to pick this verse of Scripture out and read it, Please explain to me what it meant. And notice what God is saying to the prophet Ezekiel about the nation of Israel. Notice notice this, this phrase that he uses. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. What does that phrase mean? I will cause you to pass under the rod. Now as I begin to study this, I, had, I, I once again had to put myself... In the shoes, the sandals of the shepherd to get a meaning of what this meant. Now if there's anyone that counted sheep, it wasn't the person that had a hard time going to sleep. It was the person called the shepherd. He he was responsible for sheep and he counted those sheep. And this is why he done. Maybe they were in a corral and fixing to go out into the pasture. And the shepherd wanted to make sure he'd done a couple things. Number one, he's going to make sure that he counted them. So as they came out, they passed under his rod and he counted. But the most important thing is this. What he did after he counted those sheep. The purpose of the rod. In this particular passage of Scripture, meant this. As that shepherd, as that sheep passed under the rod. Now, I don't know about you, but if you look at a sheep, especially as much wool as it can put on, there's a lot of things that can be hidden by the presence of the wool. And as that sheep passed under that rod, that rod began to reveal some things perhaps the sheep was not aware of, and especially the shepherd. And so the shepherd, because he cared for that sheep, every time it passed on the rod, he would stop and do an examination to see if there was any imperfections under that wool. And if there were, then maybe try to find out, hey, maybe something needs to be done to correct that. And you see... Let's say that there was a skin irritation that the sheep had. And you knew how that bothered the sheep. And yet if the shepherd didn't take time to examine that particular sheep. So you can see 
how the rod, because it found the skin infection, how that would be a comfort to the sheep. Now, not only did it mean this rod as a, as a, as a sign of control and authority, but also protection. Now, how was a rod used for protection? Remember how this verse of Scripture says. It says, Thy rod and thy staff, <laughs> they comfort me. Remember David talked about how that he, he, he fought off the bear and the lion, how he was able to protect his flock. Now, let's just say that a sheep was going astray. And remember, you don't drive the sheep. The shepherd's out in front leading the sheep. And he's trying to lead those sheep, and the sheep was getting in a place it shouldn't be. He would take that rod and th throw it, not at the sheep, but by the sheep to get its attention, to divert it away from where it was going. Now, it's important. Jesus said in John chapter 10, My sheep hear my voice. It's important for the sheep to understand that not only when they heard the, the sound of the rod flying by them, mark it down, they also heard the voice of correction from the shepherd. But it's there to use for protection. Because remember, the sheep out there are going through those valleys, even though they may have been green with grass, they may be well watered on each side, the places that you couldn't see, where the dangers were there, lying, waiting to attack. It was the sheep that found comfort in that rod. Now, I don't, <coughs> I don't know about you, but I know the Bible talks about you spare the rod to spoil the child. The only time I've ever been beaten with a rod that I can remember is that I went out and picked out the rod. She had the story before my mom one time. She said, and I was going, and I'm, I know exactly where I was. was living in the old house, just this side of Ain't Bed Ditch. And, and she was upset with me, and I was just having a good day, I thought. And she said, go out there and cut me a switch out of that peach tree in the back. We had no peach tree out back and it put out peaches about that big. It wasn't good for nothing. And I went out and I broke out a limb about, oh, I'd say probably about, about that big around. You know, and I thought about that long. She's not going to hit me with that. Now that explains a lot, doesn't it? She just beat the crap out of me with that dad gun peach limb. The rod was a very powerful instrument to defeat the enemy that came forth. And it's amazing how the, the little shepherd boy David, he talked about, hey, this is what I encountered and this is what I defeated him with. This rod right here. Now listen. As a shepherd of this flock, listen to me. I will defend this flock with the very rod of God as long as I have breath left in me. It is this, this book right here that is used to bring comfort and protection to all of us. What we have to learn to do is realize when that rod of correction is being used. And it's not being used as a, as a source of punishment it's being used as a source of correction to, to keep us from getting hurt and yet we look at this book as something that causes pain and hurt and it does not do that it keeps us from experiencing unnecessary suffering and yet if that sheep were to ignore the rod that was thrown toward this direction and the voice of the shepherd warning it, the sheep has nobody else to blame but itself because it found itself over the edge of the cliff or in the briars and it's stuck and its, and it's, and it's wool cannot 
free it. And the, the, the briar struck it in its wool. And it cannot free itself. Which brings us to the second thing that that shepherd had. And perhaps this is what we identify with the shepherd, the staff. You see, this other item of his personal equipment identifies a shepherd as a shepherd. There is not any other profession that carries a shepherd's staff. And it too is used for the care and the management of the sheep. The shepherd's staff will not do for cattle. It won't do for horses. It won't do for dogs. It's designed for the sheep. And what does it do? Many times a newborn will become lost, separated from its mother as it's out there in the flock. And instead of the shepherd bending down and getting his scent all over that, all over that newborn lamb, he takes the crook of that staff and picks up that newborn lamb and carries it over to its mother. Or maybe that sheep, like we described earlier, found itself in a place that it cannot free itself. And that crook has been used a many times by many a shepherd to reach over that edge and pull that sheep back. Now you know why that sheep looks at both the rod and the staff as being something of comfort. Wait just a minute. There's another reason why it brings comfort to that, to that sheep. is because that shepherd is well trained in using both the rod and the staff. He doesn't use the staff as a rod and he doesn't use the rod as the staff. Many a time the shepherd will become tired and that staff would, would, would give him su- some support to lean upon. And just as the sheep looked at the staff as a source of comfort, so did the shepherd. And he understood the purpose of that. And keep this in mind. As he grew, as that shepherd grew, he adapted his equipment to fit himself. It's amazing how that this book that's in front of me has never changed ever since I've been reading it. It has never changed, not one bit. And yet I find myself learning new things. It seems every time I want to open up and begin to read and to study the depths of God's Word, I find things. And all it's doing is this. I find myself adapting to this. It doesn't adapt to me. I have to adapt to it. It's amazing how the Bible is something that one thing that fits everybody. But as you be, I begin to grow as a Christian, we begin to lean upon the very comfort of the Word of God. Lastly, the staff is used as a guiding instrument. Now, if you were going to ride a horse, and if you were going to turn the horse to the left, what rein would you pull on? That depends on how the horse is trained. Am I right, Gary? You say, well, I'm going to turn left. I'm going to go ahead and pull left. Gary, you've had them where you sit right there and take that right rein, lean it to its right side, it would turn left. Am I correct? It's called neck rein. I have trained. That staff was used as that sheep was moving along. If it, started, if it needed to go right, if it needed to go left, if it needed to go left, that shepherd would lay that staff to the right side of that sheep. And it knew not to turn to the right, but to turn to the left. It understood the purpose of that was for guidance. Listen, many times you and I lose our way Because we forget about the presence of the shepherd. 
And remember, this is what this verse of Scripture says. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid because the shepherd is with me. Your rod and your staff is what brings me comfort. They bring me comfort because they are getting me through this valley. Where, where is he leading me to? Hey, why should that even be a concern as long as he's doing the leading? He will not lead me to any place that I should not be going. If I find myself lost, it is not because the shepherd led me to where I am lost. It is because I lost my way. The shepherd is leading me somewhere that is so necessary and vital for me to be. And I call your attention to the very next verse of Scripture. Remember, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And then he says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Picture this. Months ago, as a sheep, you found yourself a little further down the mountainside. You were at the very bottom. The altitude was where the home place was and the corral, and you were very comfortable. And yet as the summer months began to press on, and the grass began to get a little thin, the shepherd decided, hey, it's time for you to start taking you up a little bit higher up into the mountain. And as the snows began to recede and as the grasses began to grow, the shepherd began to take you through one valley after another. And it didn't surprise you when you went through this valley, there was something to eat. Danger on each side of you. There was something to drink. You didn't concern yourself because the shepherd was there and that rod and that staff was there. But where is he leading us to? It's interesting that David kind of closes out the psalm where he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. But prior to that verse, he said, from the, from, the point, from the point, from the viewpoint of a shepherd, from the sheep, he says, Shepherd, you have prepared a table before me. Now, you may be going through valleys, and we all do. You know what? If you're not going through a valley, you better look and say you might be in the wrong spot. It is God's will for us to find ourselves in the valleys. There's nothing wrong with finding ourselves in the valley. We think, oh, being in the valley is such a terrible thing. Why is it? There's food and water. The shepherd's presence is right there. What's wrong with being in the valley? I tell you what, we always talk about these mountaintop experiences. Even when Jesus led his disciples into an exceeding high mountain, you know, there's Peter, James, and John, just those three right there, and Jesus alone he took them up to a high spot. And all of a sudden, Jesus changed. His countenance changed. The way he looked changed. He began to glow. The very glory of God came upon him. And there appeared some other people that were with Jesus. There you had Elijah. And there, you had, there you had Moses. And the disciples were so excited. Lord, let's just stay right here on top of this mountain. Let's just build a temple right here. We'll just stay right here. But you know what? There's no work to be done on the mountain. All the work has to be done in the valley. And yet the Lord says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. The purpose of the shepherd, taking those sheep and leading them away from the home place. Leading them to a place where they're really not too comfortable with. They'd rather be back home. Listen, I love to go on vacation. I love to visit places. But I tell you what, what excites me more than any of that is when I start coming back home. I like to come home. I don't mind visiting, but I like to just come back home. And the shepherd understood that the sheep were more comfortable being down from the mountain back home. And yet he knew it was necessary for them. 
in order to eat and to drink. He had to take them through the valleys, not understanding, they not understanding what he has prepared for them. Folks, if we understood what is waiting for you and I after we get through this particular valley, it would surprise you. What does God have in store for us? What is it that he has prepared for us? Thou hast prepared, prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Let me tell you what, if we'll just be patient enough. And let God have his way as he leads us through these valleys, as he takes that rod of, of correction, that rod of examination, that rod of protection, as he takes that staff of comfort, and as he leads us through this valley, and we may have to go through another valley. I don't know how high this mountain is that he is leading us to through, but one valley after another pretty soon, we're going to have what we call a tabletop experience. That's where we'll be at next Sunday. But until then, as a sheep, let's be very receptive to what the shepherd is trying to do. The Lord is my shepherd. I am need of nothing. I shall not want. They've all understood he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. They understand what it means to have their soul restored. And you may be, leads me through this valley that I'm not comfortable with. And yet I find out, even though I may not, I, 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 I would rather be somewhere else. Where I am, he's fed and watered me right where I'm at. And he's protected me. He's guided me. These are just lessons of life that God leads every child of God, not to, but every child of God through. And for what reason? So he can show you what he has spread out on the table. His about eyes closed.